Hello my crafty tribe, this is Artsy Maddie and let's get creative. So today I'm just starting off with a plastic Easter egg, just gluing it shut and giving it a coat of Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint, uh, just to be sure none of that purple shows through. So this Easter egg is a little bigger than normal. Um, it would probably fill up most of the palm of your hand when it's sitting in your hand. And then I'm just gonna coil uh, this wire foam, or sorry, it's called foam wire, and it's made by Schmidt. I am able to get this at Dollarama uh, in Canada, but they sell it with a lot of the garden supplies right now. So just have a look um, whenever you're in a garden supply section and hopefully you can find some of this too. This is great stuff to have in your crafting arsenal. It comes in handy for a lot of different projects. I'm actually planning a few things down the road with it as well, definitely for Christmas. So if you see this, pick it up. So I'm just having this little wrestling coiling <laughs> session here with this um, foam wire, just wrapping it all around this Easter egg. You really have to wait uh, for the hot glue to dry as you're doing it. Otherwise it kind of wants to pull apart from each other and pull away on you. So just try and have patience and hold down and wait for that hot glue to dry. Now the other thing I want to mention is I'm using my hot glue gun but it's on low temperature because this is foam and plastic so I didn't want to have the high heat on so hopefully you have the dual temp um, hot glue guns and then just keep it on the low temperature. So now I just have a two liter pop bottle and just cutting it down. I measured uh, three inches up from the bottom little bump there and two inches down from the top little bump. There's kind of like a little indentation for the um, label that goes around it. And then I was lucky, I had just found these coasters at a thrift store a while ago and kind of ran into them while I was looking for the supplies for this project. So I thought, I bet this is gonna fit at the bottom of this pop bottle. And sure enough, it did. If you don't have this though, of course, don't panic. Um, I just used it because I had it. All you have to do is cut a circle out of some cardboard or some foam, whatever you have laying around. All it's gonna do is just cover the bottom um, edge of your little bee scup here that we're making. So I just filled my pop bottle with some scrap paper just to make it more solid so that it wouldn't be collapsing as I was gluing it and having the little wrestling match with this, uh, this <laughs> foam wire again. So I tried cutting the top part of the lid off with a knife. It wasn't quite strong enough, so I just ended up using a hot tool to do it, this hot knife tool. But you could also just use your chop saw or whatever you have handy to do it. Just the utility knife wasn't quite enough to do it. So if you saw there at the beginning with this foam wire, I just cut it on a slant and tried to push it down as close as I could to that bottom lip. And then I just start the little wrestling rodeo here again with this foam uh, coil here. So just trying to take my time, let the hot glue dry. Otherwise it'll kind of want to pull up and coil back up tight again. So you just have to be really patient with it. But same thing, just remember to have your hot glue on that low temperature so it's not melting all the foam. I accidentally let my uh, foam wire hit into the little hot tool. So you'll see I have a little flaw in my foam wire here now, but I just thought of it as character. My b skep just has a little extra character. So just showing you here at the top, I just kept coiling up, up and around, and then I made myself a little handle at the top. So I just left a little bit extra, just holding down for that glue to dry. And then I just tucked the little handle back down into the hole and glued it down in there. So then um, I wanted it to look like it had the, the way that the b skeps are put together where they're kind of wired together each layer. And then oftentimes it kind of makes this pattern where it's just coiling up to the top of the b skep So that's what I tried to create just with some of the hot glue on low melt temperature and just creating that little effect just drawing a line, following the little bumps up to the top. And then I just gave them both um, a nice base coat of white with my Rust-Oleum linen chalk paint. 
And then you'll notice you might have some little um, holes or gaps or, or things you might need to fill with a little bit of spackle or polyfilla or whatever you have handy. You can even use the hot glue to fill it in. Um, you just might not have as much control as with the spackle or, or polyfilla. But just give them a nice base coat. You want to be sure not to have too much poking through or peeking through. And then just let that dry thoroughly. And then once those are dry, I'm going to mix up my favorite. This is one of my favorite things to work with. This is glaze. And it's just a clear medium that stays wet for a little bit longer than paint. And it can also make your paint transparent. So I put about eight parts glaze to one part paint. And I'm going to be mixing up some of the Vivid Yellow and the Cashmere Tan, I believe it's called, from Dollar Tree. So just some, some of their cheap acrylic paint. So I've mixed in the Vivid Yellow and then this Cashmere Tan. And then I'm going to add a drop of the yellow to the Cashmere Tan. And then a drop of the Cashmere Tan to the yellow. So I'm trying to create kind of that straw color that the b skeps are made out of. And then I know this isn't a b skep it's more like a Winnie the Pooh little honey hive, but I just thought I would make them match and just try and get that nice straw color. So I start with the yellow and just putting it on, going with the circular motion of the foam wire. So just following in that direction. And I didn't really wipe this off too much. I just let it kind of show through a little bit of the white, but it's a pretty solid coat of the transparent glaze. And then once I had a good coat of that, now this does take a couple hours to dry just because it does have that long open time. So you just need to wait um, probably about an hour and a half or two for that to dry. And then I'm going to go over it with the cashmere tan color. So it looks kind of light as it goes on. It'll dry a little bit richer, a little bit uh, deeper, but not too much. And then this one, I do wipe some of it off. So I still want some of that yellow to poke through and then just this little transparent layer of the cashmere tan. And then as a final step, I've just added a little squirt of the um, burnt umber to some more glaze. And I'm going to use this kind of the way that you guys like to use uh, antique wax, um, that Waverly Brown antique wax. So I'm just going to wipe it on and or brush it on and then wipe it off and let it kind of sit in the cracks and it looks really light here but it will actually dry a lot richer like a lot more of that um, burnt umber color but just transparent so just letting it sit in all those cracks just to give it a bit of age and interest I guess <laughs> and then I'm just using some homemade black chalk paint and just painting the little opening for the bees to come and go from the bee skep. So I just painted a little rectangle. That's what I'd kind of seen on the authentic ones, so I thought I'd stick with that idea. And then this, you guys, I'm so excited to share this idea. I hope you guys love it. I hope I see these little bees everywhere. So I have a bee mold that's made by Plaid, but they've discontinued it. They don't sell it anymore. And I've been looking for it in my house for a month. So that kind of tells you how, how disorganized of a crafter I am. Um, I'm trying to work on it, trying to get better, but I saw these little stickers at Dollar Tree and to me, they are bees. And I was so excited. I can't wait to share this with you guys. And I just hope you guys all make them and I'm seeing these little bees everywhere. So the little beads that go off to the side are the wings and I paint those white just with the Rust-Oleum linen chalk white and then I'm just using my homemade black chalk paint. Um, I learned that recipe from Holly at Hot Humble Pie just adding a little bit of talc baby powder to your paint gives it that really nice um, chalk paint texture and coverage that we all love. So I just had to do one coat of each of these colors and then I'll just show you, like I'm just creating the little black and yellow stripes and the white wings. 
and just creating a whole bunch of these little bees. So you can't get much more affordable than this. I thought they were the cutest size and you'll end up with, I don't even know how many is on this sheet. I would guess like 50, right? It looks like about 50. And they're connected with a little string of glue. Like when you pull this off, they come off in the whole line. So then you just have to cut with scissors in between each little bee. So what you saw there was I have the vivid yellow, just the acrylic paint from Dollar Tree. And then I just added a bit of that talc baby powder to turn it into chalk paint and to get the better coverage. And it works amazing. I just love this. So thankful to Holly for that tip. So it works wonderful if you guys want to try that out. So they're pretty forgiving. You can see I make a couple little mistakes, but they're easy to go back and, and correct. Or you don't have to be that precise. They're pretty forgiving. So as you pull them off the sheet, you just cut each little bee separately and they're pretty sticky. The glue on these stickers is pretty great. So um, they've been on there about a week and I haven't had any come off. So I don't think you need to hot glue them, but if you wanted to, just to be sure, go ahead and do that. But I just stuck them on with the sticker glue that was already on them. And then I just covered my little bee skep with them. I just put lots near the, the little opening there and around the top. And then same thing with my little Winnie the Pooh little beehive here. So I just tucked in some um, jute rope to hang it with. And on this one I painted a little circle for the little opening. And that's just again with that black homemade chalk paint. And then I just stuck on the rest of my cute little bees. So just again I put quite a few near the opening and just kind of randomly all over. So fun. <laughs> and then here's just a glimpse of them as the final project. So you can see kind of those, those straw colors in the paint and then just that aged glaze kind of sitting in the little grooves just to kind of make it look a little bit old and worn. So you guys will have to let me know what you think and if you're going to make some of those little bee stickers let me know in the comments. I hope you do. <laughs> So this video today is actually part of the Sticky Tuesday playlist. So this is the Sticky Tuesday challenge and it's hosted by um, Diane and Jenny at Deco Easy and Kiki's DIYs and they host this every second Tuesday of the month. So it's really fun. I've participated in it before and it's one of my favorites. So Jenny and Diane at Deco Easy. If you guys aren't familiar with them, they're one of my favorite crafters on YouTube. They make really neat kind of farmhouse style, but with their own twist. They're from the Netherlands, so they just have a really unique twist to it. I love all of their videos. And then Kiki DIYs. She is so beautiful and funny, and I just love her crafts, and her videos are just a breath of fresh air. So happy and cheery. I just love her. And then this, <laughs> so this was my big rescue. I just saw this and it really spoke to me. I just kind of loved it and I hoped I could do something with it to kind of modernize it a little bit. I think it's from the 70s. And I can tell when I shop at Goodwill that this is at its last days at Goodwill. So it's been there for the cycle, it was half price. And I always kind of worry they're going to throw these things out. And for whatever reason, this just spoke to me. And it was the last day for the blue tags. And I thought, I just have to try and rescue this. So you guys will have to let me know if you think I did a good job or if it was a fail. <laughs> but I'll just walk you through this process. So it was just stapled on to this just piece of plywood board. And it's actually hand embroidered. So it looks like a a print on the fabric and then somebody went in and just hand embroidered all the detail everywhere. So I want to share this story with you guys. 
like I shop at thrift stores a lot, but I ran into this really elderly woman there one day. I don't even know how she got there. If she was still driving, she, I would guess she was like 90. And I was looking at this really beautiful hand embroidered tablecloth and it had a stain on it. And she came over to me and she said, don't you worry about that stain. I'll tell you how to get that out. You get the original sunlight dish soap, the yellow bottle, and you soak it in really, really hot water overnight. And she's like, and if you have some borax, add a little bit of borax to it too. And I kind of humored her and I thought, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I bought the tablecloth because I felt like I couldn't really leave without it. It was really beautiful. And sure enough, I found some sunlight soap and borax and I let it soak overnight in super hot water and that stain came out. <laughs> And then I found out that was a thing. It's like laundry stripping. She's like the original laundry stripper lady. So it is a great tip. I've rescued so many linens from the thrift store since that day. It freshens them right up. It gets out any grimy stains that haven't come out in the past. It works wonders. So I want you guys all to know this tip because it got this little embroidered thing perfectly clean. It did shrink a little bit. <laughs> So it didn't quite fit the frame like I wanted it to. So here I am cutting a mat just out of some cardboard that I had um, just to kind of make it fit into that frame. I thought it was going to fit perfectly, but it did shrink a little bit. So this is how I'm compensating for that. So then I should have stopped before this point, but I decided to put Mod Podge on top of this fabric as well. You saw me put the Mod Podge underneath, but I did it on top as well. And I kind of wish I hadn't have done that. So you guys will have to let me know if you've ever rescued something like this, this way. I think it's because this fabric has the texture of the embroidery to it. I just couldn't really get it even. And so some places kind of have a little bit of a sheen to it uh, with the Mod Podge. I kind of wish I had to use like a spray sealer Mod Podge or something like that. But anyway, I've learned from this project. I hope you guys do too. You'll have to let me know if you think it was a win or a fail. I'm just going in with that cashmere tan color, just the acrylic paint from Dollar Tree and just giving this, I think I gave it two coats just to be sure, just with the foam brush so I didn't have brush strokes in it, just to keep it looking like a matte, matte. <laughs> And then once the Mod Podge had dried, I just cut off all the edges. I got a little impatient. I used my heat gun. I shouldn't have done that as well because I feel like it discolored a little bit on this project as well. So I tried so hard to rescue this. I think I still like it. Maybe not just hanging on the wall, but as the backdrop for a little vignette or something, I do still really, I think I really like it. I was just a little bit disheartened that it was so hard to save, but I'm glad I did it anyway. <laughs> but you guys let me know what you think or what you would do differently. And then we can all learn from it together, right? So here I am just putting it all back together in this frame. This was just a thrift store frame too. I'm sure I got this one for half price too and probably meant to paint it white or something, but it was like serendipitous, meant to be. So I just stuck with the gold that it was originally put it all together and let me know what you guys think. And then this project is so quick, don't blink or you'll miss it. This is just the little soap dispenser from Dollar Tree. I kind of love that golden color of it, kind of that 70s gold <laughs> color. And I just printed out this little honeybee picture. I'm using the gloss Mod Podge so that it matches the gloss of the ceramic little uh, soap dispenser thing. And I'm just gonna turn it into a vase. So I have some of the white sunflowers from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna uh, curve them a little bit so they all have their little sunny faces sticking out. And voila! little two dollar two minute DIY. <laughs> and then because I couldn't resist they sell a little soap dish that matches. So I thought what can I do with this little soap dish? So I got a little bit creative. Just this quick easy little project. I have some of the rocks from Dollar Tree 
and I just used a little mixture of them. And I always love it when I see little weeds growing up through the cracks in sidewalks and through gravel in alleyways. That just makes me so happy. And especially when I see some little bees on it. So that's what I tried to recreate here. So I just pulled off some little tiny flower buds that I found. They're kind of like a plasticky material. So they had a little bit of ability to stand up on their own. So I just tucked them into the rocks, glued a couple of those little sticker bees onto them. And voila, another little two minute, $2 DIY. <laughs> and then this last DIY, I found this really pretty vase and it was full of sunflowers that I'm gonna use in another upcoming video. And I just thought it was really pretty, just this nice happy yellow color. And then I have a bunch of these willow branches. I got these at the th thrift store too. It's pretty excited to find them. They're pretty good quality. And so I just um, put some foam inside the vase, stuck them all in the vase, and voila, here's the little vignette all together. So you guys definitely let me know what you think, what you'll be recreating or what inspired you. I'm so grateful for you, all of you guys subscribing. It's so encouraging. I just love it. I'm loving making videos for you guys and all the feedback is so great. So thank you so much. I feel like I've, I've been lucky enough that um, just the best subscribers are finding me. It's making me so happy. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you soon in the next video. Don't forget to check out that playlist. You're going to find tons of inspiration. I just know it. I love Sticky Tuesday. We'll see what everyone made for it.